Okay guys, and one final look in complete darkness just so you can see. There she is. Hey, what's up everyone? Today's video we're gonna be working on this Chevrolet Silverado. And if you guys don't know and can't tell from the title, we are going to be diagnosing a AC air conditioner uh, failure on this truck. So it's quite common on these years of this truck. This one, the AC hasn't worked for quite some time. So I'm going to be walking through the process with you guys, how to diagnose it and see where it's coming from. Most likely it's going to be from the AC condenser, which happens to be a common problem on these vehicles. It was also a recall on this style of condenser. So uh, here's the truck here. I'll show it to you very quickly. There's not much to see at the moment besides the AC does not work. And one of the issues is when you start it, you run it, take my word for it, the AC compressor, which is right there on the bottom there, it doesn't even engage. We also checked on our pressure as well, and it's got no uh, Freon or refrigerant in the actual system, so it has leaked it out somewhere. We don't know where, but what I'm going to do is rather than just going ahead and replacing the condenser, I'm going to make sure that that is in fact the issue. So what I have over here is some stuff to test it. So I have some R134A refrigerant, which is the type that this vehicle uses. And I have a few other things here. So this is the uh, hose kit. I'll link everything in the description below that you guys can get this stuff with. Um, I bought this and I find that it's coming in handy more often than I would have imagined. So um, this is the hose kit that we're gonna be using to uh, fill the system with one of these cans. Also here I have AC UV dye. So what we're gonna do is put some dye in the system along with some refrigerant and we're gonna find where that leak is exactly coming from. The other thing I have here too is a UV light. Comes with a couple batteries, uh, I guess some goggles or whatnot, uh, <laughs> maybe to help see the dye better, but nonetheless, this is what we got. So this combined with this is going to let us see where it's coming from. And from other people's experience on this, they've had to charge the system to see where it's leaking from. And where it's leaking from, I will show you guys, is if you look on the side there, you can probably see as the camera comes into focus, see that little weld right there between that end tank and the actual condenser? That little weld is known to leak. So everybody's having to replace their AC condenser because of that little weld. And because this one's been empty for a while, it's hard to see if that is in fact where it's leaking from. So what we're gonna do is put that dye in there, charge the system up, and then go hunting for that leak and where the dye is leaking out from. So let's go ahead, get set up. I'm also gonna pop this cover off. It's held on by a series of speed clips. Um, it's gonna help us to access the condenser a little bit more and see the hoses. So I wanna be able to get in there. So I'm gonna pop up all these speed clips. You just pop out the center of them with a little pry tool or a flat screwdriver. So I'll go ahead, pop this up and then we'll get set up. So you just lift up the center like you can see there and then you can pop the whole tab out. So you can do it with one of these pry tools or flat, same thing. So lift up the center, take the whole clip out. Pretty easy. Okay, so once this is off, there's this other piece of plastic here and I know we're not getting into the removal of the condenser, but I really wanna make sure I have access to it. So that you'll see down here there is this little clip right here. So this, you just pop this little latch up and then we can take this top plastic portion off of here. So, cause I wanna get it off honestly, so that I can get to the condenser once we get that die in there. Okay, so I'm gonna lift up on this little clip while at the same time pulling up on this plastic and this should pop out now. So with the two sides removed, this thing should just pop up all the way across. And now we can fully access our condenser. Okay guys, I am pretty certain it's gonna be that spot, which is right there. So if you look, see that little weld right there? And I'll try to point at it that one right there you can see staining around it from some oil I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera but there is see that little kind of stain coming out of there so like I said the AC has been down for quite some time on this vehicle but you can see it's been leaking something 
out of that joint right there. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's hard to show on camera, but right there coming out of that little weld between these two tanks, you can see a little bit of something there. So I already looked along all the lines. So this is a transmission line, but um, along the lines which come in and out from this side, you can see them down there at the bottom, the black ones. There's no visible leaks. So this is common on these vehicles for that to happen so I think it's gonna be that you guys unfortunately so nonetheless we don't want to throw parts at this thing for no reason so let's go ahead we'll charge it up so over here this is our low pressure side so we're gonna take this cap off we'll hook up our gauges to it and the high pressure is right there and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some dye in it and fill it with a little bit of uh, Freon and we'll go ahead and see and confirm that it's leaking out of over there. So while I hook up the gauges and the hoses, I will tell you guys that I do have a vacuum pump and you would pull a vacuum on the system, but because this system is uh, you know, faulty, there's no point in pulling all the air out of the system just yet. We just wanna pressurize it to make sure that it is in fact coming from that problem area. So we'll go ahead, hook everything up and uh, get to it. We'll hook up our low pressure. We'll hook up our high pressure as well. And we'll get our hose ready here, and we're gonna put some dye in before we fill it with the R134. Okay, I have to laugh slightly because this is uh, one ounce of dye, and they were kind enough to give you this measuring thing on the side, which you can see quarter of an ounce, half an ounce, three quarters of an ounce. And then I guess they're assuming that they would have filled up the bottle to the right area, giving us one full ounce, but it says four applications if they gave you the full amount, but they didn't fill it to the top. So, so I'm going to have to anticipate that from here to about here is going to be our quarter of an ounce, given that this distance on the bottle is a quarter of an ounce. So I'm going to take it down to here. It looks like we're only going to get three applications out of this bottle for some silly reason. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and pour in that amount and we're going to try to pour it in here. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to use this old trick, getting this to follow the screwdriver in here because it's such a small port. This stuff is neon as ever. It's pretty crazy. All right, so now that we have our quarter ounce of dye in the line, we'll go ahead and connect up our R134A refrigerant, and let's get this in there so we can see where our problem is. I'm gonna screw this can on. Okay, so we got our gauges hooked up. What we're gonna do now is we can open our valve. So you're gonna see the open. So we'll open it to the system and with our valve shut, we'll go ahead and start the engine and then we can open up our low side and we'll make sure that the can is attached and this is feeding through into our line. We're gonna start it up. AC is on. We'll turn it to full blast. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we'll make sure our can is depressing the little valve inside so that we have pressure and then we'll open this up so that it can start charging and filling the system you can see the gauge going up so we're filling our low side and i did mention it but this vehicle had no ac before so it's still coming out hot all right guys so barely even been running for five minutes and it's already starting to develop a little bit of wetness right around that spot. I don't know if you guys can see it with the camera but that little weld area is getting wet so let's grab our little UV light and see if that is all of a sudden neon right there. Also important to note I am starting to get AC in there even though we barely even put any Freon in there so our AC is back so all the components are working but I think it's just that leak that's the issue. Okay so here we are with our nifty little UV pen. And let's see what we got. Yep. See that green right there, you guys? That is our culprit. The common issue. Right there. Okay, guys. So that one can is pretty well empty. And I checked all the other lines. that went around with the UV lights. And just double checked them. Just followed along. And I don't see any other problem areas, but the longer she runs, the more obvious that neon gets there. Hopefully you guys can see that on camera. 
So this is just getting worse and worse and that is the slow leak in the system. The curious part is the other two welds that are also on the bottom there. If you put the UV light on them, that one there, that one's fine. And so is that very bottom one. They're both fine, it's just up top, the one that you can see through here. There she is, that's the leak. Okay, so we closed all our valves, turn these all to close, and then we can remove these. Okay guys, and one final look in complete darkness just so you can see. There she is. So, this is probably after about an hour. It's leaked a little bit more, so you can definitely see. That is the culprit of the slow leak on this system. All right guys, so that's gonna be it for today's video. If you did find this helpful or informative, make sure you give it a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button so you're notified of all the latest videos because I will be doing the actual repair video for this once we order some parts. I just wanna show you uh, exactly what was going on and my diagnosis of that. So one other small thing too is the issue with that, if you look at the design on it, the condenser core is actually held up and supported by those three tack welds, which is probably the reason why it fails. There's only those three tack welds, and then there's that one vertical tank, and the bracket actually is on that vertical tank. So literally, like I mentioned, those three tack welds are holding the whole condenser. So you hit a few big, nice bumps, and it's gonna you know, crack those tack welds. So when I replace that unit, I'm probably gonna try and reinforce it maybe with, uh, I don't think I'm gonna weld it because I don't have an aluminum welder, just a steel, but I'm probably gonna maybe reinforce it even with some JB weld just to give it more support so that it doesn't uh, crack that same tack weld again because I know it's a common issue and people have replaced several of those units. So anyways guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.